This is the second of three videos that I'm going to explain why he is a false teacher. They'll all be linked in the description below. Now, this one here is, uh, or the first one was labeled by him saying hints of Holy Spirit, where I use Jesus's words teaching us what Holy Spirit is. This one is called or titled, What is Sin? And let's listen to what he's got to say, what is sin. Peace be with you. Friends, I'm not sure if you're like me, but um, even though I love Lent and Easter and all the great festivities, it's kind of with a sense of relief that I return with the church to ordinary time. And how wonderful now on this 10th Sunday as we pick up ordinary time. The church gives us such a fundamentally important reading. Okay. He just said the church gives them a reading. That's not really, it's, it's, it's a way he's saying it I don't like. Um, this reading is actually a doctrine, meaning that a bunch of men sat down and said, how are we going to explain sin? And they wrote and they all agreed that this is how they're going to teach sin and put their stamp of approval on it and called it a doctrine. The church has many doctrines. This is one that's on sin that he's going to read from. First gives us such a fundamentally important reading. Wonderful now on this 10th Sunday as we pick up ordinary time. The church gives us such a fundamentally important reading. Get out your Bibles. Look at Genesis 1, 2, and 3 pivotally important chapters. Number three, of course, is about the fall and original sin. To return to these stories is to discover again, listen, the basic dynamics of sin. The, the perceptiveness here is stunning. It's staggering how deeply uh, the author perceives under God's inspiration the nature of sin. So Now it's about the nature of sin, but he said that this is going to be a dynamic understanding of the sin. So, um, but he mentioned also that there was only one author, which I don't believe. And then he said it was inspired by our creator, which how did our creator forget to tell him that he already defined what sin is? And that's what I'm going to teach you is how our Creator defined what sin is. Now, um, where do I want to go here? Uh, Listen now, as it's done in the typically biblical... Yeah, I wanted to replay it a uh, little bit we'll so you can understand. To return to these stories is to discover again, listen, the basic dynamics of sin. The, the perceptiveness here is stunning. It's staggering how deeply uh, the author perceives under God's inspiration, the nature of sin. So listen now, as it's done in the typically biblical, uh, laconic narrative. After the man had eaten the tree, the Lord God called to him and said, where are you? Now, the omniscient God obviously is not, uh, you know, having a bad day and, and having lost sight of, of his creatures. He knows exactly where they are. But what's being signaled here is sin always involves an alienation from God. Did you get that? I want you to hear that again. Exactly where they are, but what's being signaled here is sin always involves an alienation from God. Okay, so that's what sin is, all right? Well, our Creator has uh, another way of explaining, so... What I'm going to show you here is Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17, and these are the 12 commandments, okay? Now, these 12 commandments are the agreement that he made with his nation in the Sinai to exist on the promised land, or he will kick you out of his nation or send you off the land, okay? Now, the next thing Moses did or our creator told Moses was to make a tent for meeting with him, had these things made, and then he had a uh, fence go around and 
in the courtyard is where he assigned uh, the Levites as his priests, and his priests had to be anointed to go into the court courtyard. Now, the text will talk or say something about ministering to our Creator, and that's not really truthful. Uh, they're going to perform a service. Now, our Creator talked to Moses and told him what the s priests are going to do. And what they're going to do is if somebody from any one of their tribes, um, and it's usually a head of the family, that if they know that they didn't obey any of these 12 commandments, they were to bring a sin offering. Our Creator told Moses these are needed a sin offering. Therefore, our Creator just defined these as 12 sins. There's only these 12 sins. There's no such thing as an original sin. Now, there is no Old Testament and New Testament. You needed to be forgiven of sins to remain in his kingdom, okay, or his nation. Jesus tells us that in his kingdom in heaven, he is going to forgive your sins. So if you want to be a, a obedient or a good Christian, you must be very observant to not disobey our Creator and live by His 12 commandments because these are defined by Him as your sin and Jesus needs to forgive you of these sins. So you have to be aware of what, you are, what your sin is to be forgiven. And they aren't that hard to go by. All but one right now because we don't go by uh, the correct calendar for our creator now he is going to let's see uh where do i want to go yeah he already did this i want you to hear it like again they are but what's being signaled here is sin always involves an alienation from god okay that's he he's saying that's what his sin is although i want to know how the atheist knows that he's uh, disobeying our Creator uh, will so, but what hap what I'm doing is I'm sliding it down because he talks about the original sin to where he's going to start explaining what sin is from Adam and Eve not obeying our Creator and eating a fruit off the tree of knowledge. So he's going to pick up that like the dynamics of a sin is that once they know that they've annihilated themselves from our Creator, that they have this shame that they're going to hide, or we're going to hide, and then we have this blame game. King for us, even as we run away from Him. So, but the alienation gives rise to shame. And the shame gives rise to what? We'll watch how the narrative unfolds. The Lord says, well, then I can tell, I mean, you've eaten of the tree I, I forbade you to eat from. The man replied, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, why would you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, and so I ate it. Watch the rhythm now. Alienation from God leads to shame and the shame leads to blame. Okay. This is why he's a false teacher. I explained to you how our Creator defined what sin is. The problem I've got with here, he doesn't understand the story of Adam and Eve. So let me explain Adam and Eve, and let me explain the now or the not obeying of the, of the, our Creator of eating the fruit off the tree of the tree of knowledge. Um, what you learn in this story is that our Creator said to Adam and Eve, do not eat of the fruit of this tree. We learn that Satan deceives Eve and then Adam. And then 
our cor our creator is going to question about this, and then the first thing he's going to tell them is that they are now going to die. And that is because they didn't obey our creator. So the tree of knowledge is to obey our creator or not to obey our creator. And what this is, this is a story to tell their children, the Hebrew children, this is the knowledge that has been passed down to us. One, we have a creator. He made everything. Then he created a male and then created a female. And then Satan has this deception to deceive Adam and Eve. And then that is why we die. So it's pretty much the story of why they exist and why there is death. It's that simple. So the other thing I want to mention, don't think there's only one Adam and Eve. There's many Adam and Eves our Creator created for the simple fact that we know there are many races today on this earth. So this is the story that was told to the Hebrew children to have the understanding at a very young age of why they exist, why everything around them exists, the existence of Satan who is going to uh, deceive us, and we will not always be uh, following our Creator, and we're going to disobey our Creator, and that's why we are, are, while their children were taught, why there is death. Okay, it was that easy. Have a great day.